I know you can't reveal a lot, but where were you able to even stay and what was the food that you were eating? And so, so by the way, um, the, I'm glad you mentioned the food because the world central kitchen, um, despite, you know, I, I mean, I, I read some of, uh, Jose's tweets that came out later showing that he was, you know, advocating for, for Israel in some ways, but, um, which is hugely problematic. But when I was there, the work they were doing mm. was really important. Um, all of the hospitals were depending on meals from the World Central Kitchen. All the uh, there's a lot of organizations who are caring for families. Um, so so the way it's the way it's most people have just sort of ad hoc um, set up tents wherever they could find space, and everybody starts to fend for themselves. But eventually people sort of got organized into groups for, for protection, for services, for just management. Um, and so some of these groups then were taken over by local organizations. And so these local organizations have taken charge of distributing meals to their, the people that they're responsible for. So there's a few of those and they all depend on the WCK's daily meals. Now there are a lot of, you know, other sort of, uh, uh, kitchens that have just popped up. Most of the kitchens that were already there were contracted with WCK. Uh, and I, I hope they'll be able to still continue. But honestly, at this point, without the WCK meals a day, there's going to be even like far greater collapse. So what Israel has effectively done is, first of all, they, they, they shut down UNRWA by withdrawing funding. I mean, they've marginalized UNRWA and it's, it's just shocking and, and extraordinary how they did that. Um, just sheer lies that everybody bought, you know. Um, and With no evidence they, while there's crimes against crime after crime after crime that Israel commits and we're exactly. still funding them. And then there's no evidence of UNRWA and we defund them. Exactly. The other large organization is ANERA, um, Americans for Near East Refugee Aid, and they assassinated uh, their um, director in Gaza. And now, you know, and ANERA continued to function, but now um, with with this new targeted assassination, ANERA has shut down their services. Um, and then the WCK has shut down. So Israel has effectively um, shut down the three major aid organizations who have kept Palestinians alive just barely in the South, not in the North. There's nothing is in the North. People are literally just starving to death in the North at this point. There, there is famine in, in Northern Gaza In Southern Gaza, people have been able to survive on, um, some of those meals. And then like a these canned goods that are coming in through Egypt that are kind of, they're kind of gross. <laughs> Um, but it's it's some some level of sustenance and people are living on it. Mostly uh, it's mostly fava beans um, and if you can cheese stuff that tastes it's really rancid. Um, and then there's some uh, makeshift ovens, uh, bread you know taboons what we call them to for bread making and people are making their own bread too because some flour is available in the south although it's really, really expensive. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, and then there, there's a few small farms that are still operational in the South. Most of the farms have been bulldozed and bombed. Um, there's, you know, there's a few. And so very, very rarely you will find some produce, but it's, it's really expensive and it's just, it's like gold. <laughs> Um, I, I think most people in Gaza have not had a piece of fresh fruit or fresh vegetables in in six months. The world central kitchen that Susan's referring to, we'll be talking about this more in this in our second segment um, with Prem Sacker. But that's um, people don't know about this. There was an Israeli airstrike which killed a Palestinian driver and six international workers from 
Chef Jose Andres's World Central Kitchen and the charity, of course, has suspended aid operations. And the aid workers were driving in a clearly marked car. They had already given Israel a heads up about the trip. They coordinated in advance. I just wanted to clarify that it wasn't one strike. It was three. You know, these coordinated, the, the, the deconfliction protocol is very clear. Like when you, when, when somebody, before anybody travels, any of the aid workers travel, they give the names, the car, the license plate, the color of the car, the, and, uh, and the exact route where they're traveling. And so the, the WCK cars were marked. They were deconflicted. They had like on the roof, it was very clear, clear, clearly identified as a WCK vehicle. And they hit them the first time. There were some survivors who crawled out, went into another car. They hit the other car. There were a couple of survivors that crawled into the third car, and then they hit the third car. So this was, they they hunted them, and they killed them. And this was, and they're trying to say, again, they're gaslighting the whole right. damn world, trying to say that it was an accident. It's just unbelievable. I'm not, I mean, nothing surprises me when they kill Palestinians. Like, that goes without say. But you'd think that they would be afraid. And then here's images of that. You, you'd think that they would not want to touch this celebrity chef's organization, but they have such a, se a deserved sense of impunity. When I say deserve it, I don't mean that they deserve to have the impunity. I mean, their sense of it is well-deserved because nothing does happen to them, but that they well, actually... It's not the first time, though. I mean, they... they... You know they've done this before they they've yeah. done it before and they you know they survived the scrutiny because they they just bullshit their way out of it like initially they tried to say that oh uh they were killed by a hamas bomb right. they tried right. to say that and they because but they but it didn't quite work out with the evidence because they right. said hamas had planted a booby trap bomb for them uh but except the missile strike was very clearly through the roof of the car and so that didn't work and they said oh it was an accident or and we're investigating whatever yeah they're bitter at liars and i don't know why anybody even quotes them or gives them gives anything they say any kind of credence susan yeah. I, I i would you agree that i would say they're probably what they're investigating right now is figuring out the specific line of hasbro that they can feed the rest of the world that would some people may buy it but I, I don't know. Clearly, they're not invest actually investigating. No. Yeah. No, they know exactly what happened because they ordered it. They ordered that it happened. This was this was a calculated move to shut to to shut down the WCK because it was because the World Central Kitchen uh, was able to bring in uh, a lot of food aid through this new maritime corridor and Israel doesn't want it. They, they, they literally want to starve Palestinians. And Susan, w was there a member of the WCK that at some point in the past few months was critical, publicly critical of the Israeli government or Netanyahu that would have potentially also elicited them, you know, uh, vengeance for their, you know, um, I don't know. Not to my knowledge, okay. actually, quite the contrary. Hmm. So as a matter of fact, so Jose um, has come under a lot of criticism yeah. from Palestinians because he had actually uh, a lot, a tweet he made a long time ago was was uncovered where he talked about Israel having a right to uh, self-defense and uh. going out. Hamas and just buying that whole Israeli Hasbara line. And he also provided meals to uh, the, the displaced settlers. Mm. Um, and okay. so he was, he was a friend of Israel, yeah. wow. but, uh, but again, like Israel has no friends. Israel is in it for, for themselves. 